Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing well. I just want to talk to you guys really quickly um, about a part, a passage of scripture that I was reading and uh, just wanted to really um, tell you guys about this and how, the importance of um, getting our lives right with Christ and how pivotal that is. Um, that's so important for us to do. Um, if you have not believed and surrendered your life to Christ, that is so important that you do. Um, it reminds me, and I was reading the verse in uh, Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 through 17. And previous to this particular verse, Pharaoh was hating pretty much. Pretty much he was hating on the Israelites. He was willing to do whatever it took to destroy the Israelites. He was looking to do whatever it took because there were so many Israelites that were overtaking Egypt, right? And so he was willing at early in the in, in Exodus, he was looking to kill the firstborn Egyptians, right? Now, male Egyptians, I should say. So after a while, what he pretty much wanted to do after he realized that he could not touch God's, God's people, which is the Israelites, what ended up happening was he ended up, he ended up making them slaves. Fair, he, he ended up making them slaves, making them struggle, 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 making them do all this work, right? And eventually God used Abraham, he calls Abraham and Aaron, to go out and tear Pharaoh to let his people go, which are the Israelites, right? Now, here's the thing. Prior to this particular verse, right, he had already sent plagues to Egypt because of Pharaoh's disobedience, his stubbornness. Now, here's the thing. One thing we must remember that God, nothing happens without God's cosign. Nothing happens without God allowing it to happen. Remember, he's in control. So God had already told Aaron and Moses, specifically Moses, to tell Aaron, to tell Pharaoh, um, that he was going to be stubborn anyway. Pharaoh was going to be stubborn anyway, even after they had told them, he, God had told them to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. He knew that he was going to be stubborn. Matter of fact, he allowed it to happen. So the fact of the matter is, is this. One thing we must remember is that God allows things to happen to our, in our lives for a reason. And so often, we find ourselves in situations in which we reject God because we think we know better. We reject God because we're not willing to turn our lives over to him. We reject God because we want to continue to live the way we want to live and expect God to bless us. We reject God because we think we know better. Failing to realize that we're serving things that God is the one created. Why are you serving these man-made things that God has already created? Why? Nobody, nothing has no heaven or hell to put you in. God's in control. We got to stop allowing the world to get to us. We got to stop allowing what the world says culture is, that is culture approved to allow us to cause us to believe that nothing's going to, that nothing's going to happen. Of course, God loves us, but he's also just. He's also just. Does God want does God want us? Does he want his people to perish? The Bible lets us know that he doesn't want his people to perish. But those who reject him and does not surrender their lives to him will have to pay the consequences. And hell is their home. The Bible lets us know in John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him believeth in jesus christ this is jesus speaking here believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life everlasting life where do you receive everlasting life eternal life in heaven the problem is is that we think we know it all we think we we, we don't want to totally surrender god wants wholehearted people who are willing to surrender to him. He knows your heart anyway. You can't fake it. You can't fake it. You can't fake a relationship with God. Either you want it 
or you don't. Either you want to see revival in this in, in, in this world or you don't. Either you want your life changed or you don't. Either you want peace or you don't. Either you want joy or you don't. Either you want strength or you don't. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. But what he is going to do is going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. And if you don't, you have to pay the consequences. And he uses so many people, us as the body of Christ, to speak and sow a seed into, into to you guys, those who are not saved. God has given us an opportunity. He loves us so much. Do you really think that he wants his people? Do you think he wants people to go to hell? No. But with anything, if we don't do our jobs on our jobs, what will happen? You will be fired. Right? If you don't take care of your responsibilities, you will be handled. That's life, right? The fact of the matter is that God gives us grace. We, he allowed, God allowed his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. But don't take advantage of his grace. Does that mean we can continue to live in sin and expect God to bless us? No, but surrender to Jesus Christ and make him the Lord of life and allow, allow him, the Holy Spirit, to change you from the inside out. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of those who believe in it, in Jesus Christ. I want to read this particular verse, Exodus chapter uh, 9, verses 13 through 17. Prior to this, God had already said the plague of blood, the plague of gnats, the plague of flies, the, pl the plague of livestock. No, I'm sorry. This is a plague of livestock. Um, so the blood, the gnats, and the frogs as well as flies um, so now he's and also to be honest the beginning of uh, chapter 9 talks about how he brought the plague of livestock where he killed the livestock um, <clears throat> with a deadly plague now in verse 13 here it is he's bringing the plague of hell in other words rain hell verse 13 then the Lord said to Moses get up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews said, let my people go so they will, so that they can worship me. If you don't, I will send more plagues on you and your officials and your people. Then you would know that there was no one like me in all the earth. By now I can, I could have lifted my hand. This is the key piece right here. By now, I could have lifted my hand and struck you and your people with the plague to wipe you off the face of this earth. To wipe you off the face of this earth. This shows his. This shows God's control. How, in other words, what I mean by control, in other words, he he is in control of all things. But it also shows his grace. He could have easily, can easily kill Pharaoh. He could easily allow Pharaoh to die. He could have easily pay, allow Pharaoh to pay the consequences for not only his disobedience, but also for his lying. Because there was multiple times where he said he would let the people go after the plagues that he has dealt with, that he was dealt with. But God showed him grace. Every opportunity that we are alive, we have another opportunity to totally surrender our lives to him. We have another opportunity to repent of our sins and make him the Lord of our life. We have another opportunity to tell others about Jesus Christ and make him the Lord so that they can make him the Lord of their lives. Every day that we're alive is God's grace being shown upon us, his grace and his mercy, which we don't deserve. Not even us who are saved. We don't deserve it. Verse 16, but I have spared you for a purpose. We're alive for a purpose. We are alive for a purpose. God has given us the ability. He has given us grace. He's given us gifts. And every time we, and it's so important for us to utilize the purpose that God has instilled within us. 
One thing we should ask ourselves is what is your why? What is your why on this earth? If you don't have an understanding of what God's will is for your life or what God's purpose is for you on this earth, you might need to fast. You might need to pray and ask God to give you clarity on what his will is for your life. Don't waste your time doing things that God did not ordain for you to do in the first place. Everything that God wants us to fulfill his purpose and his kingdom on this earth. What are we here for? To let his will be done in our lives. Everything we do, whatever we eat, whatever we drink or whatever we do, we must do it to the glory of the Lord. To the glory, to the glory, to the glory of the Lord. I'm going to read that part again. I'm going to read verse 16 again. But I have spared you for a purpose. To show you my power. To show you my power. Everything lets me know that everything he does is for a reason. Everything God does is for a reason. But I have spared you for a purpose to show you my power and to spread my fame throughout the earth. What did I just say? Everything that God does is for a reason. And everything we must do for him is to make his name known. We must glorify him in everything that we do. The blessings that he's done for us is not because of us. It's because of what he does for us. The gifts that we have and the things that he's done through us is not because of what we have done. We are nothing but filthy rags. But because of his grace and his mercy and the abilities and the gifts that he's instilled in within us, it's because that's why we're able to do the things we're able to do. That is why we're able to open up businesses. That is why we're able to um, start ministries. That is why we're able to speak into people's lives. That is why we're able to prophesy. That is why we do certain things. That's why God has given us the abilities that we have because of him, not us. Not us. He wants to show, he wants to show Pharaoh his power because Pharaoh thinks he is powerful because he's king of, Israel, of Egypt. No, failing to realize that God is more powerful than him and anybody else. And God wants to show his, he wants to spread his fame throughout the earth. God's name must be known around this earth. Time is up. Time is out for games. Time is time is now for the church to stand up, especially with this pandemic. Which faithful believers out here is going to stand strong in the Lord? No matter what people may say about this pandemic, no matter what people may say about this COVID, are we going to be strong? We people should know the difference between believers and non-believers in our faith, how we're responding in this pandemic. Are we standing strong? Are we being obedient to God? Are we being faithful to God? Are we, are we walking in joy? Are we walking in peace? Are we allowing the fruits of the spirit to flow through us every single day instead of that? Allowing what the news people say and instead of allowing what your co-workers say, instead of allowing what your friends say, your family say about this whole pandemic to worry you. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. Verse 17, but you still lord it over my people and refuse to let them go. Verse 18, I'm going to go and read verse 18. So tomorrow at this time, I will send a hailstorm more devastating than any and all the history of Egypt. Don't wait until Jesus come back. Until the end times. I mean, until the until the revelation time. Until the end times happen. For you to get your life right. Don't wait until the consequences happen. Until you get yourself right. How many times have you been in a situation where your parent has told you not to do something? And you did it. And you did it. And you did it. And consequences happened. And then you began to try to change up and behave yourself save yourself the trouble don't put yourself in a situation where you are um thinking you know it all 
Don't allow, because the enemy's using things of this world to cause us to flee further and further away from God. The things of this world, that the, the things that, the, that, the, that Satan has put into this world, the things of this world, it's the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Don't allow the love of money. Don't allow the things of this world. Don't allow people's praises. Don't allow things of this world to cause you to lose focus on what's and on who and what is important. And that's God and the things of God. What if Jesus was to come back today? Would you be ready? Would you be ready? And it's, it really get me a little bit emotional. It really gets me emotional even saying that because it hurts me to see so many people who are lost and don't even realize it. I want so many people to be saved. I want so many people to be delivered. I want so many people to be set free. <sighs> if Jesus was to come back today, Oh, if this was the last day on this, if this was your last day on this earth, would you know Christ? Would you know what your destination is? Would heaven be your home? Or will hell be your home? Once that time comes. Romans 10 and 9 lets us know that if we believe in our heart, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and make him the Lord of your life today. And repeat after me. Father, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that you allowed Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me white as snow. Make me anew. Make me anew. Change me from the inside out. Help me to glorify you with every single aspect of my life. I'm yours. I surrender my life to you today. Use me for your glory and help me to grow in my relationship with you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, if you pray that prayer, you're saved. Repent of your sins, get baptized. That's a symbolism of you dying to your old self and you have new, having new, it represents you having new life in Christ. Find a church, a great church that's preaching the truth, that's preaching the Bible, that's preaching the gospel, where you're finding great community, where you can give your tithes and the offering, where you can, where you can um, find community of like-minded believers, where you can grow together in Christ, where you can find a fellowship, where you can fellowship with one another. Find a great Bible to read. Find a, if if you want to start out reading devotionals through the Bible app, do that. Get into this work. Get into this book. This book is your playbook. The Bible is there to help you to grow, not only in Christ, to grow in Christ, but not only that, to help you know how Jesus lived his life on this earth so that you can do the same. Make his name known. Glorify him with your life. Pray. Talk to him. Prayer is simply communication. Grow in your relationship with him. 
If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. I love you guys. Glorify him with your life. Don't waste time on this earth. Enjoy the life that God has given you his way. Do the right things. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't sit in yourself in relationships that you don't have no business being in. Give God your all. And when you give God your all, when you give your God your best, the best is yet to come. Be blessed.